Hello everyone, there's a massive new study looking at omega-3 that we need to go through because despite what the TV commercials say, there's a lot of controversy around omega-3 and whether it actually protects our heart or not. What this study did is combine all of the data that we've got about omega-3, so it's called a meta-analysis, and it gives us an overall answer. And if you do like this video, please smash the thumbs up button. It really does help with the YouTube algorithm. Now let's get into it. So despite significant advances in the prevention and treatment of cardiovascular diseases, they remain the leading cause of deaths in the United States and most of the world. It actually accounted for 23.1% of all deaths in the United States in 2017. But we already knew this. Heart disease, it's a massive problem that we need to get on top of. And this is why people get so excited about omega-3. So there are two different molecules, one called EPA and the other one DHA, which are the two main omega-3 fatty acids. And they have shown promise in the prevention of cardiovascular disease. But when we look at large, randomized controlled trials, they found inconsistent results. So these studies are top of the top. They're well designed and they're placebo controlled and they didn't give us a clear cut answer as to whether omega-3 actually helps prevent cardiovascular disease. So let's go through the biggest three. So the first one that we'll look at is called the ASCEND trial and it looked at over 15,000 diabetic people and that study found no reduction in cardiovascular risk with omega-3. And that's a truly massive trial. So we would have thought that if omega-3 is as good as what the media says it is, we should be getting a massive reduction in cardiovascular disease. But that's not what the ASCEND trial shows. The next big trial is the vitamin D and omega-3 trial, or the VITAL trial, and it was over 25,000 people where it looked at healthy adults. There was a 7% reduction in cardiovascular disease, but it was not statistically significant. What was unexpected about this trial is that there was a 28% reduction in the risk of heart attacks. So that's a massive reduction in heart attack risk. But since that reduction was so large, this paper was heavily criticized because other papers, they didn't show much benefit, if any benefit at all. Whereas this paper, it was a huge benefit. So we didn't quite know what to make of this trial. And the final trial is called the Reduce It trial. And this trial gave a highly concentrated form of EPA. And this paper found a statistically significant 25% reduction in the risk of heart attacks. So overall, looking at these trials, we've got one trial saying that there isn't any benefit of taking omega-3, whereas the other two trials, they do show a benefit. And to make matters even worse, previous meta-analyses, where they pull together all of those trials and see what it shows, those analyses, they came to conflicting results as well. So there are three recent meta-analyses of the effect of EPA and DHA on multiple cardiovascular outcomes, and they all reached entirely different conclusions. One analysis found a low certainty of a possible protective effect. Another analysis did find a protective effect, but they dismissed it as uncertain after using a very conservative hypothesis correction. And to cap things off, the final meta-analysis did show an 8% risk reduction. So we've got two analyses that don't show much benefit and one analysis that does. So what's going on? Why are there so many conflicting reports? Well, the reasons for this variability among the results of the randomized controlled trials, they're not very well understood, although a number of possible explanations have been proposed. So one of the reasons could be the potential interference of omega-3 mechanisms of the action by modern cardiovascular prevention and treatment, especially the use of statins and statin doses. There also may be differences in how much omega-3 a population already has, as well as how compliant that population is on taking omega-3 supplements. So for example, if one population already has a lot of fish in their diet, they probably already have a lot of omega-3 in their bloodstream, so supplementing it might not give that much benefit. And the final potential reason of all of this conflicting data is whether the studies used EPA alone or both EPA and DHA together. So how is this analysis any different from the rest? Why should we listen to this one that was only published very recently? So this current analysis, it differs in the choice of what trials to include 
and it focuses only on the studies where the intervention is EPA and DHA supplementation and not dietary advice. So this addresses more directly the question of what the effect is of omega-3 supplementation on cardiovascular outcomes. So overall, this current analysis, it's a lot more targeted and hopefully will give us a clearer answer. So in this analysis, there were 40 included studies and the dosages varied from 400 milligrams a day to 5,500 milligrams every day. And here is the exciting part. After narrowing down and focusing in on whether omega-3 supplementation actually helps or not, we get a clearer picture. We can see that supplementation of EPA and DHA, it results in a statistically significant risk reduction, particularly with the risk of heart attack, and it was a high grade level of evidence. So that is epic news. It does look like using omega-3 supplementation, we can reduce our heart attack risk. But once again, because this is key, why do we need to listen to this analysis? So the results of our meta-analysis differ from those of previous reviews, likely because of the differences in exclusion criteria. So again, this is just referring to the studies that were actually included in this analysis. And the authors of the paper did this because dietary advice, it often consists of multiple recommendations, not only to eat more fish, and it's difficult to estimate the dosage and monitor compliance. So the analysis, it's narrowed its focus. And here is the truly exciting part. So if a molecule works, if it truly is beneficial, then a small amount of that molecule will give us a small benefit, whereas larger doses, we should get a larger effect. And this is exactly what this analysis shows. So in the case of heart attacks, the risk reduction, it's dose dependent, and each additional one gram a day, it's associated with a significant risk reduction of 9%. 9% reduction, that's huge news, but I do need to exercise caution here. For cardiovascular mortality, as in the death rate, we did not find a linear relationship, and it does raise the possibility of a non-linear dose response curve. So it seems that most of the protection against cardiac heart disease death rate, it's achieved with dosages less than 500 milligrams every day. So overall, in a nutshell, if we boost our omega-3 intake, it looks like we can reduce our heart attack risk. And the further that we boost that dose up, the more benefit that we'll have. But that's not the same with our death rate. So with our death rate, it looks like we quickly reach a plateau. So even though we might be having fewer heart attacks, our death rate, it stays the same. So for me personally, the dose that I will take is two grams every day. But one important question is whether EPA, DHA, or some combination of both is more effective. Because it has been observed that DHA supplementation, it can increase LDL, the so-called bad cholesterol. And some researchers believe that omega-3 supplementation would be safer if it consisted primarily of EPA. However, LDL, it's an imperfect marker of cardiovascular risk. And although DHA increases LDL-C, it does not change apolipoprotein B. This is consistent with shifting the LDL particles to a larger, less atherogenic profile. But overall, we're unable to conclude that EPA alone is more effective for cardiovascular prevention than EPA and DHA. So overall, we don't yet know which one is better out of EPA and DHA. So despite what you might read on other blogs or other websites, we just don't know. And again, this is the latest evidence that we've got. And before we go into the omega-3 brand that I personally take, I do want to mention a couple of other points. So there is a commonly held belief that earlier interventional trials found a larger cardiovascular protective effect for EPA and DHA, but that later trials found a smaller risk reduction. And some of the potential reasons for this is that the new trials benefit in advances of study design. And like we mentioned earlier, the prevention of cardiovascular disease has changed dramatically in the last three decades. But when this analysis used the year of publication as a predictor of cardiovascular disease and omega-3 supplementation, they failed to find a significant relationship. And that's why this analysis, it included 40 different trials. It didn't just include the most recent ones, it included all of them, all of the ones that met that inclusion criteria. And the final point that we've already touched on is fish intake. So the analysis found a higher risk reduction in populations who eat less fish. And this is consistent with the idea that the protective effect, it reaches a plateau at high enough doses. 
So with those points out the way, let's have a look at brands and there are some key things that we need to consider when selecting the brand of Omega-3. So since we don't yet know which is better out of EPA and DHA, I personally will take a combination of both until there's more data. So that's point number one. Point number two is that we need third party testing certificates. We need to make sure that the supplements that we take are actually what they say they are. We need to make sure it's EPA and DHA that we're taking into our bodies. And the third point also relates to testing. So omega-3, it's primarily from fish. And fish, if they're old fish, they can accumulate heavy metals. And heavy metals are the last thing that we want. So when we're looking at a brand, we need to make sure that the omega-3 has very low heavy metal content. So when I went on to a third party testing website, at the top of the list is WHC, Uno Cardio. And the cheapest one on Amazon is the version that's got some vitamin D mixed in with the omega-3. And we can see from this certificate, we actually are getting EPA and DHA. And if we have a look at the heavy metal content, it's very low. So personally for me, this is the brand that I've chosen. It's third party tested, I know exactly what I'm getting, and there's a very low heavy metal content. And if you do want to see all the supplements I currently take, please check out this video's description.